Women empowerment and closing the gender gap, two issues that go hand in hand, topics that are old but new at the same time, and subjects that are discussed all over the world, issues that are universal concerns. National parliaments talk about them, international organizations emphasize them, and of course, more women than men fight for them. Women have voices and have the right to have their voices heard. From a desert of arid sand to an infrastructure that is truly ground, from isolation to globalization, from desert to oil to the foundations of a civil society, Saudi Arabia has seen changes and transformations that few countries have seen in the space of 85 years. It is a country that is growing fast and which has achieved immeasurable goals in its short modern existence. It has immensely changed, not at the demand of external forces which view these changes as being slow and insufficient, but as part of the natural internal process of evolution. Our population is young, up to 65% is under the age of 30. What do I do with this? It is a youth that is very well connected to the outside world through social media. It is a youth that knows what it wants, a youth that understands and respects its identity, an identity which is embodied in its country's tradition and, more importantly, in its religion. It is a youth that does not want to live the way its parents or grandparents lived, and one that also realizes that even if it did desire to do so, economically it would not be feasible basically because the modern household will no longer be able to survive on only one salary we are undoubtedly at an important crossroad in our development and it is dictated by three factors youth women and the economy with religion as a backdrop to saudi society if change is to remain and evolve it can never be imposed on a country it must come from within at the speed of its population and we are certainly no exception. Starting with education, Saudi Arabia understood and still understands that the foundation stone of any modern industrial society is education for both boys and girls. Public, public education is free at all levels. And over several decades, the government provided scholarships to both men and women. In 2005, the King Abdullah Scholarship Program was created to further diversify specializations and more importantly give all students a chance to study abroad and an opportunity to be exposed to intercultural interactions. It has made a conscious and positive response by it was a concert, uh, response by King Abdullah to indirectly fight extremist trends and incorporate the younger generation into the globalized world of the 21st century. Current numbers show that there are presently over 207,000 students abroad. Today, the government has allocated the largest part of its budget to education, that is 23%. Um, of course, it's gone beyond these slides. I have put the slides, the numbers, all on the slides. Uh, when schools for girls opened in the kingdom in 1962, literacy rates for women stood barely at 2%. Five decades later, and I'm talking about only 50 years later, literacy rates for women stand at 97%. And it is only because some older women are illiterate, whereas illiteracy among the younger generation has almost completely been eradicated. And the country's true development, economic growth and international success can only come about when it uses its human resources to its fullest, male and female. And here comes the eternal question. Who is the Saudi female? Does she have a voice? or indeed a face? What kind of life does she lead? Or more appropriately, is she capable of leading with all the restrictions that seem to hinder her? Does she contribute to society? Or is her role confined to childbearing and the household? Now this stereotype of the Saudi woman is far from the truth and has come about as a result of uninformed sensationalist writings that prefer to focus on the so-called out of the ordinary because her way of life on the surface is so at odds with that of the rest of the world. And so she is depicted as oppressed, subservient to, and suffocated by men, uneducated, not allowed to work, and inferior to her partner. It always surprises me that this is still the opinion of some journalist's writings in the 21st century, even though the truth is accessible with a little bit of research. The truth is that that the Saudi woman is an educated, strong and ambitious individual influencing and today participating more in society. She understands that education is her key to success. 
Islam encourages education for all, regardless of sex, making education both a right and a responsibility. There exists a very fine line between religion and tradition, and generally speaking, much of what is seen by the West as being backwards and oppressive to women is based on traditions. And this too is changing, and there is no longer a stigma on women being educated to all levels, pursuing a career and realizing their ambitions. Progressively, women are entering the job market. Women in Saudi Arabia have in the past worked in what was considered uh, traditionally appropriate professions for women, mainly health and education. The government is making major efforts to improve the status of women. It has implemented reforms and created new jobs to ensure that women have better opportunities to participate in the country's economy. As a result, the number of women working in the private sector increased from 215,000 in 2012 to 496,000 in 2016. And that is an average of 8,500 jobs per month. And according to a report in the Saudi daily newspaper, Elekta Saudiya, based on figures provided by the Ministry of Labor and Social Development, the number of Saudi women working in the private sector has increased by 130% in the last four years and now represent 30% of the total Saudi workforce in the private sector, up from 12% in 2011. So women empowerment benefits the country in many ways, but the main advantage is the development of Saudi society through the earnings as well as support for themselves and their families. An additional and maybe little talked about yet important aspect is the fact that it could lead to a decrease in domestic violence because uneducated women are pro more prone to violence than educated women. Suffice it to say that the more educated a woman is, the more aware of her rights she is and of the available legal recourse systems. Perhaps the most strategically significant act regarding women took place in 2013 when King Abdullah took two major decisions. The first stipulated that a minimum of 20% of the Shura Council shall be made up of women, which is a percentage that competes with many countries. This means 30 women members out of a total of 150. The second decision stipulated that women would participate in the municipal elections, which resulted in 22 women being elected, more than expected. This year, King Salman has approved the appointment of a number of women in the leadership positions in various institutions that were previously predominantly all male. Financially, Saudi women also have a lot of money in the banks. Women should not be limited to the way they are represented in advertising, especially in the Arab world, because it only confirms, emphasizes, and deepens cultural biases and subconsciously teaches society that women are confined to do only certain tasks, usually in the home. Yes, we are moving and in the right directions. This doesn't mean that the picture is all rosy and that challenges and obstacles don't exist. They do. Everyone sees things from their perspectives, applying their value system or that of their countries on others, judging, condemning and sentencing them for being different because they do not understand the culture, religion, traditions or history of the others. Respecting others for who they are is a basic human right. And so is understanding that they, who they will become will take place at their pace because people and societies are in constant change. We tend to see how different others are and judge them negatively because they are not from the same mold and because we are ignorant. We never see how much others have actually ch changed because in their eyes it is always too little and too slow. It is time to identify and promote shared values, dialogue in favour of cultural diversity and endorse understanding. Thank you.